Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Matt Mangriotis. I'm the uh, product manager for the CN Ranger product line, uh, which we'll be talking about today on today's webinar. It's about 9.02. Uh, sorry for the late start, um, having a little bit of computer issues, uh, but I think we're all set. So let's get going uh, without further ado. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them in the question box in your uh, panel there and I'll get to them uh, when possible. We'll likely save uh, the hard ones to the end, uh, but if you feel like asking questions, please do so in that box. Uh, again, my name's Matt, and we're gonna talk a little bit about CN Ranger today and the, other, and the PMP portfolio in general. Uh, I'm gonna share my slides right now so that everyone can see. And here we go. So as uh, hopefully most of you on the call know, um, Cambium Networks provides the affordable, reliable wireless connectivity solutions for just about every need, uh, every wireless need. We have everything from long range unlicensed, uh, long range licensed links um, through PMP products. And I'm moving from right to left on the screen here. Um, we have our flagship point to multi point 450 product line, uh, the EPMP product line, which now is the EPMP 3000, uh, utilizing the 802.11ac Wave 2 chipset uh, to do some really cool stuff with point to multi point networks. And then we move inside and uh, outdoor and indoor enterprise class Wi Fi, as well as um, residential Wi Fi to complement that network. So we can do any really any wireless solution that, that's required. And all of this is um, covered by CN Maestro. It's managed by CN Maestro, which is our overarching single plane of glass uh, management solution. Obviously, demand for bandwidth increases. We show this slide. I show this slide on a number of different uh, webinar styles, uh, basically showing that just traffic is just the demand is exploding. And I, I, that's kind of an obvious statement, uh, but it's really important to understand why we continue to advance these solutions uh, as we move forward in time. Uh, a lot of it is video. Uh, reliability is important. We have a proven track record of uh, reliability and, and resilience to weather, uh, all kinds of different things um, with our products. We come from that Motorola heritage. Uh, so Cambium Networks is really known for its reliability and um, it's really built to last. And that's not something we, we take lightly. So when we do have quality issues, we stand behind them, we get them fixed and repaired and we get the, the units back in the field as soon as possible. I'm flashing the roadmap up here for PMP 450, uh, just in to say that we're continuing to invest in this platform. Uh, we're not abandoning this platform, but we're introducing something new. Um, and it's gonna be another horse to ride, uh, another choice in the toolbox uh, to service those wireless solution needs. But we are continuing to invest in the 450 platform especially on the Medusa platform, which is our leading edge technical innovation. This webinar is about CN Ranger in large part, but I do want to mention that, that the CN Medusa is out there in 450M, and it, it has industry leading capacity, spectral efficiency. It utilizes the existing subscriber modules, and most folks who have heard of Cambium have heard of CN Medusa and what it can do for you. Multi-user MIMO, massive multi-user MIMO. We can talk to several SMs at the same point in time, uh, thereby increasing overall capacity and spectral efficiency. So it, I do wanna mention that this is out there and many of our customers are enjoying the benefits that come along with the usage of, uh, of this product. Later this year, also in that same platform, the 450, we're introducing a connectorized uh, 450B, which is a, the latest uh, generation of subscriber module. We're also doing this in three gigahertz. And we're gonna do what's called the Micropop. Uh, Micropop in 450 is gonna be a lower priced uh, device that will be an Omni or a Sector, two different models, or a connectorized version. Uh, so three different models total. This will provide that, that last 15% uh, or so that you can't get to uh, because of line of sight issues. Typically, uh, folks are looking at the LTE type solutions to get around line of sight issues. Well, this is an alternative uh, to, to completing those links by putting a, a localized a AP or a micro pop um, in place where maybe the line of sight is, is hampered or you can't get to those, those last customers. So there's some solutions coming on the 450 platform that will make it more viable uh, in certain situations. 
We recently introduced Medusa in the three gigahertz. And the reason I'm bringing this up is really we're bringing that technological advancement and innovation to the three gigahertz band. Um, and in three gigahertz is, is a band that, that folks look at to overcome near and non line of sight issues that five gigahertz can't. And so sometimes uh, three gigahertz is looked at. And quite often when three gigahertz is looked at, um, LTE comes into the conversation because there's ready off the shelf solutions uh, using LTE protocol. However, um, there is a, some good reasons to, to consider 450 uh, versus LTE. So uh, a while back, uh, maybe mid last year, I wrote a white paper discussing the, the pros and cons of utilizing LTE versus our 450 solution uh, in three gigahertz. And you, I encourage you to go to the website and take a look. Uh, it's really a, a short uh, qualitative based uh, paper just discussing the, the nature of the different solutions. Uh, and really, if you look at the, the chart there, the bubble chart, the range in coverage um, is where LTE really shines. And there's several reasons for that we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, but if you're looking for the overall total capacity, um, the overall subscriber bandwidth, especially in the uplink, uh, overall spectral efficiency, 450 will outperform any LTE solution that's in, in existence today. Um, and certainly even, even the one that we're going to talk about next. So let's talk about uh, C and Ranger a little. Why do why do folks look for LTE? Well, if it's a small customer, uh, really, as you start out, the goal of the deployment is to reach as many folks as you can, and that's that's going to be the primary reason for deploying. Is is you got to reach those customers and get them in your network, uh, so you can start uh, receiving revenue from those customers. So near non line of sight coverage. Um, overcoming obstacles, getting that link established is the most important thing. As you grow further and faster, um, cash flow becomes an issue uh, and uh, attaching more customers to that network um, perhaps is the most important thing. And now, so now I'm looking for inexpensive options to attach more customers. Um, so maybe inexpensive CPEs uh, become the primary reason for looking at technologies like LTE where I have um, IOT or interoperability support, and I can choose a low-cost subscriber if I if I want to do that. And then as I get really big, um, I, maybe I have investors that aren't so technologically savvy, and they look at a company like Cambium Networks and say, hey, who is this Cambium? I've never heard of them. Why would I tie up all of my investment into a uh, proprietary solution when I have this LTE solutions out there, and I've heard of LTE, as an investor, they've probably heard of that uh, because of the mobility and all the other things. Um, so maybe they're demanding that you use a standard. So Cambium's perspective on this whole thing is to uh, really adapt this uh, industry standard to our fixed wireless solution. Uh, we're, we're not reinventing anything. We're utilizing off-the-shelf chipsets, uh, LTE chipsets, to do this. Uh, but we are going to put our own spin on it. Um, in effect, we're taking advantage of all of the cool things that are in the LTE chipset in terms of uh, technical things like OFDMA, uh, better sensitivity, the possibility to add carrier aggregation and licensed aggregation, uh, really frequency reuse one. So all these cool technical things that get come along with the chipset that can help overcome those near and non-line of sight issues and increase range. So we're going to do that without reinventing the wheel, so to speak. Um, we're going to differentiate on that standard because we're going to remove the cost and complexity associated with the LTE uh, protocol and, and using LTE equipment. Um, that means uh, embedding the, the EPC and removing all that stuff. So we'll talk uh, um, in greater detail about that in just a minute. But we'll be able to exploit those air interface features that I mentioned before. It is a higher power radio, uh, and we'll be able to take advantage of that, in, especially in the 2.5 range. We're going to leverage our expertise in building a robust and reliable um, outdoor radio product. Uh, some of the folks that do the, the low cost or low end versions of these things um, don't have that reliability or, or longevity considerations uh, taken into account. And uh, as Cambium, we, we definitely will. And then we're going to, most importantly, retain all of the networking features, the ease of use, the you know, management solutions uh, that are out there and, and put them into the CN Ranger solution. So as I mentioned, we're calling it CN Ranger. It's the new LTE-based protocol platform from Cambium. 
And it really brings all of that stuff that's required for a fixed wireless solution into, um, into the LTE space or bringing LTE into our space, so to speak. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, we're, we're going to address some of the shortcomings that exist that existing LTE solutions have uh, with this solution. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the 450 solution may still outperform LTE in a lot of different scenarios. So there's uh, quite a bit of uh, different different things we're going to address uh, with this solution. But there are still going to be scenarios and use cases where the 450 platform makes more sense, uh, especially from a total capacity and an uplink uh, perspective. Uplink by its nature, uh, LTE is, suffers on the uplink. It's really designed to push more data in the downlink. So the way that the frame is structured actually makes it less, um, less throughput in the uplink, no matter how it's configured. So it traditionally, LTE looks like this. Uh, where you have an eNode B, which is kind of your outdoor access point or your radio access network. And that goes back to the core of the network. And the core consists of several entities, several pieces. Um, the the uh, MME, the mobility management entity, the HSS or the home subscriber server, which kind of contains the authentication servers for that uh, network to get the subscribers on the network. All the gateways and policy control for doing all the setup and uh, establishing those links from the UE to the to the core of the network. Um, in our case, we're going to eliminate all this complexity. Uh, we're going to encapsulate, uh, virtualize, and embed the a EPC into what we're calling the baseband unit. Um, the baseband unit and remote radio head in our system make up the RAN and the EPC. So all of those functions are virtualized and contained. We're also going to put the the Canopy's functions, meaning the uh, the Cambium fixed wireless know-how and ease of use onto that. Uh, it's great uh, to eliminate all the complexity and, uh, and simplify this network to make it look a lot more like our fixed, flat, um, easy to use uh, layer two type of type of network. So this is uh, this is our main uh, differentiator in terms of uh, how it compares to a standard LTE solution. As I mentioned, we're splitting the architecture and making it a little more flexible. And there's a, a few reasons why we're doing that. In a traditional 450 system, we have the baseband and radio together. Uh, if you've been on these webinars before, you've probably seen some of these slides, um, but I'll go through it again for, for those that haven't. Uh, when we take the 450, we have everything all in one outdoor unit. And I know that's a nice, elegant solution for deploying outdoors. Uh, but in this case, we believe that the flexibility we're providing by splitting the architecture into two parts uh, is worth uh, the extra effort to, to do that. Um, so we'll have a baseband unit that has an eight by eight uh, channel support or four carrier support. We can support up to four two by two radios or a single eight by eight radio uh, with a BBU. So there's a, a number of different options. And uh, the way it's deployed is kind of DC power to the remote radio heads, which will go on the top of the tower with the antennas. And then the BBU will have its own power and the CPRI fiber cables will connect those two, uh, the RRH to the BBU. It's really about future-proofing it um, and keeping everything at the base of the tower. So we can actually start with one remote radio head, one sector, and then uh, kind of add more as you need and all powered by the same BBU. The other point is that it's not frequency dependent, the BBU. So you can add a two gig, three gig, and if, if we decide to do a five gig, we can do that uh, later on down the road. It's uh, future proof in that we can advance the LTE release uh, architecture, release software on the BBU and support new features uh, with simply software changes on that BBU. The RRH doesn't need to change. And of course, it makes maintenance easier when that uh, BBU is down in the, uh, in the base of the tower. So first release, it says Q1. Uh, we're going to bleed into Q2 a little bit. Uh, we're looking at April launch uh, for this product. Uh, it's upcoming. Um, we are going to support bands 38, 40, and 41. Uh, in North America, band 41 is where the EBS band uh, resides. And uh, elsewhere, there's some opportunities. Uh, some folks have access to band 40, uh, as well as band uh, 38 in some areas. The second release, which will be later in the year, uh, late Q3, early Q4, uh, will be the 3 gigahertz band. And again, because that BBU is non-band specific, 
all we need to add to the portfolio is a new remote radio head and a new SM. And uh, we're planning to do that late this year. And that'll support bands 42, 43, as well as in the US, there's a new band called band 48, that's the CBRS band. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about CBRS and what that entails. Uh, I will have another webinar uh, later this year um, in a, about a month or two that will cover CBRS in, in more detail. Um, but we will get into that uh, uh, later. There's not enough time to do all that. So the initial release, um, we will have what we call the Sierra 800. That's our baseband unit. It will support three remote radio heads today um, and then up to four in the future. It'll support 64 subscribers per sector right now. And then we'll, we'll beef that up and bump that up uh, over time to support more and more subscribers. It's got that integrated EPC and built-in GPS and uh, will support carrier aggregation down the road. Uh, this is a TD LTE solution. Uh, we are not supporting FDD. Um, I see a question on that right now. Um, the initial remote radio head will be a two gig, uh, what we're calling the Palisade. Uh, that supports two gig. It'll be two by two, two watts per port. Um, it will support two carrier aggregation down the road, meaning I can do two carriers with the same uh, remote radio head if they're within 100 megahertz of each other. Uh, we're we're going to release a couple of different antennas. One is our own. Uh, one is not. Uh, one is an off-the-shelf antenna. Uh, we we'll go into more detail in a later webinar about the the antennas and why that's important. And then the SM side will have the initial one will be a Cat4 SM, um, which has a 14 dBi integrated antenna. And again, it. Uh, it actually supports 26 dBm uh, transmit power, which is a little bit higher than the than the standard. So here's a little bit of the roadmap. Uh, we're looking at April release for the initial BBU, RRH, and SM. Uh, in early Q4, we'll have the three gig version available along with a CAT6 SM. Uh, we're hoping to get in the 128, so driving up the number of SMs per sector, allowing N equals one frequency reuse and smaller channel support. So at the initial, uh, release will have 10 and 20 meg channels. Uh, we're going to add 15 and 5 uh, very shortly after launch. And then in uh, early next year, we'll add the a new SM for 2 gigahertz, as well as a high power uh, remote radio head uh, that'll support 8 watts per port. And then we'll, we'll also add uh, 2 carrier aggregation and then 4, four carrier further down the road. Uh, you might see multi-user MIMO there in 2020, um, and that's the goal of, uh, you may notice that the 3 gigahertz uh, 450M, the 3 gigahertz Medusa product, looks a lot like uh, it, it has an 8x8 channel support already. And because it's FPGA based, our goal in designing that product was to be able to support uh, LTE on that on that piece of hardware as well. So by changing software in that release, we uh, we we believe that that product can also support the CN Ranger 3 gig um, as an 8x8 multi-user MIMO uh, remote radio head. So that'll be pretty exciting when we get there in uh, late 2020. This is just another view of kind of uh, where we're at with the Ranger products. Again, the system consists of the baseband unit and remote radio head as the E node B. And then those connect to the subscriber module, uh, which initially will be 2 gig CAT4. A couple of, um, I don't know, differentiators, if you will, among some of the competition that's out there. Um, again, we, we're all about the quality, uh, all about the rel reliability of the, uh, the product uh, it, and simplicity. So LTE can be a really complex beast. Um, if you're coming from the mobility side, you know all the things that that entails. Uh, with our so solution, uh, we're looking at virtualizing and embedding that EPC into the BBU to make it much, much more simple. It's really a uh, focused feature set, focused on the provider, uh, focus on a fixed provider. We're not going to support mobility. We're not supporting handoff. Uh, that, that allows us to eliminate a lot of that complexity. Um, if you have an existing EPC and you're already doing LTE, uh, we can run alongside it. Uh, we will not integrate with an existing EPC yet, uh, we probably will have uh, need to do that down the road, but for now, we're really running alongside uh, an existing EPC. 
Another differentiator is the SM transmit power. I mentioned it before, but the standard for LTE is 23 dBm transmit power, and we're at 26 dBm. So we have a better uplink connection, uh, which may help in some cases to uh, sustain the link a little better. Um, we're going to optimize the spectral use a little bit better, especially with our cambium designed antenna. Uh, we will have a 110 degree antenna that will support a three sector deployment on, on N equals one in a much better fashion than some other uh, competitive products out there. Uh, this won't be there day one, uh, but in an early, uh, soon after release, we will support N equals one with our cambium designed antenna. And it's uh, really, it going to take best advantage of the spectrum that you have available. So we're, we're looking forward to getting that out there as well. Um, again, flexible architecture. We will have layer two functionality. Um, we're, we're adding that into the product uh, very early on as well. And then the transmit power is higher uh, than our other products. And we will have a high power version uh, when we get, um, get to that as well. So I do want to go through a couple things of where we're at in terms of uh, deployment so far. So just a couple of data points, and this is, uh, again, kind of, you could call it parking lot testing. Uh, we did it through some stands of trees, uh, very short links, uh, but kind of showing uh, 450 versus LTE. And if you notice, the LTE does a lot better when it's through trees, um, even in the uplink. And uh, it's really very little degradation when it comes to total um, throughput, even through some of those trees. And it really, you might notice that the uplink is better with 450, and that's uh, kind of in that middle, the middle of the table there. The uplink is better with 450, um, but the, the overall total is still better with, uh, with the LTE product, the CN Ranger. We did some field trials local to the headquarters building. Um, again, doing a one kilometer line of sight. We're getting about 40 megs, uh, so, of background traffic while doing 4K video. Everything's stable, uh, everybody's happy. Uh, it's a pretty nice, um, pretty nice dif differentiating, I mean, uh, field testing locally to the to the office here. This is kind of our first deployment in the field. We have deployed in the, in the actual field, in the customer deployment. We have a couple SMs at this site and early results are, are looking pretty good. I'm working to optimize those and we will have some more beta testers uh, out there within about a month or so. And I just wanted to share a little bit of the screenshots of the GUIs uh, to sh kind of show you what it's looking like. It's really about having the simplicity. Uh, it looks, if you're familiar with CN Maestro at all, it looks a lot like CN Maestro. The dashboard is going to be very simple and report only the necessary information, such as the Mac, IP, um, software versions, those sorts of things. Um, you really configure the RF parameters similarly to other LTE equipment, um, but it's, it's going to be much simplified from that. Uh, we will have the ability to configure the network settings, put in the SIM, and then that's really all that's that's required. Uh, we will sell the SIM cards along with the SMs, um, and you can put those in and, and have them enter your network. Uh, all the HSS information will be in um, the BBU, as mentioned. So it's a very simple setup, easy to use uh, setup in the GUI. And that's pretty much it. I, I, I always end my uh, webinars with some uh, mentioning of support. Uh, Cambium obviously is, is big on the support side of things. Um, we have extended Cambium care uh, to help extend support to those that needed uh, more urgency or a very quick response. And uh, we have that available when needed. And then I always point out the community. Um, we do have a community, this, this webinar, and the slides uh, will be posted on our community after it's done. Uh, we're recording this webinar, so you can watch and, and re-listen to it if you need to. Uh, but there's also the ability to go and ask whatever questions you want. If I don't answer them here adequately, uh, or you have other questions that pop in your head, feel free to go to the community and uh, put that in there. And again, we, we're always on social media as well. So, so hit us up on Facebook or wherever you uh, like to do uh, that as well. And that's all I had, uh, and I do see there's several questions, so I'll start start going through those now. Um, let me go back up to the top a little bit. And feel free to, if you're thinking about questions right now, feel free to go ahead and type them in um, as, as I'm looking here.
I see some very specific questions, um, and I'll save those and maybe answer them privately. So are there plans for carrier aggregation 2.5, uh, so 2 gig and 3 gig? Um, and yes, there's potentially uh, the ability to do that with the product. I don't have specific uh, release when that'll come in, but we are looking at having a solution that will take 2 and 3 gig into account. Uh, mean, and to do that, you need an SM that'll be able to receive both. And so that's, that's uh, part of it. Um, 2 gig plus 3 gig, and, and I see you're saying LAA or license assisted. That means uh, you know un, an unlicensed channel for for additional data path. That, that's a little further down the road. I'm not sure that we're going to support that uh, any time in the next couple of years. Uh, but certainly, as the standard evolves and and other devices become available, we will uh, be looking at what we can do with this platform for sure. So I think I answered the GUI question. Uh, I'm not going to talk about pricing today. Uh, we'll that pricing will be released um, probably in the next few weeks and we'll take we'll start taking uh, pre-orders for the product and again I believe it will start shipping my, my target is to start shipping by the end of April um, so we're looking at uh, probably opening up um, uh, pre-orders in the next few weeks and we'll have pricing available then um, yes the policy uh, control mechanism is not is is embedded in the EPC as well, and policy really will be controlled by the uh, CN Maestro product, and, and we'll talk about how you can do that uh, in the uh, user guide as well. How you can control policy. Will CN Ranger be integrated with Maestro? Of course, um, that is one of the hallmark uh, features of the product, and it'll be able to be managed uh, by Maestro and uh, and uh, be fully integrated in that. Uh, LTE is not the CN Ranger is not in Link Planner yet, but it will be. Uh, we're we're working on that. We also will have some um, templates and things for typical planning tools that are outside of uh, Cambium as well. So how much does it weigh? Uh, that's a good question. I will have preliminary spec sheets released in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, it's not that it's because it's a two watt per port device. The remote radio head is not super heavy. Uh, it's lighter than some of our competitors, um, but it's uh, I'm not sure specifically on a Roan H50. I'm not sure if it uh, will survive on that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will, but I you don't quote me on that. Um, we'll have to uh, you'll have to see what the weight is uh, on the spec sheet. Any other questions I can uh, try to help answer? I think I hit most of them. In any case, uh, thank you for joining the webinar and uh, appreciate your attendance. And I look forward to uh, giving you some more information when it uh, becomes available. And uh, stay tuned for additional webinars very soon on um, CBRS as well as some other uh, topics. Uh, we'll, we'll cover the 450 and, and some of the new things that come out with that. And as um, is coming up, if you're in the US, uh, WISP America is coming up very shortly. And uh, please come to the animal farm session then if you are able. All right. Thanks very much. Take care.